I'm Neil Gershenfeld. I direct the Center for Bits and Atoms. I just finished participating in a session on smarter cities. It's sort of unusual for me. I'm a physicist, but lots of things we do seem to end up in cities. We talked about uh, three different linked themes about technology changing cities. One is intelligent infrastructure, smart grid internet of things that are used very commonly as terms, but in fact almost always are used exactly backwards. The whole idea of the internet is what it does is defined by what you connect to it, not what you're connecting it to, but most of the smart systems have dumb devices with smart central control that's very hard to change. So a first piece is using the architecture of the internet to push the intelligence to the edges of the network. So for energy efficient, all those purposes, you can fix it with individual devices, not with large central change. Second step that comes from that is we do a lot of work work on machines that make machines, technology to create technology. In cities, what it's leading to is a new notion of self-sufficiency. I mentioned an example of a team now running the city of Barcelona, um, focusing on, instead of buying products from far away, using these emerging fabrication technologies so the city, in the city, produces what it uses so that skills and jobs are, are local instead of 50% unemployment, buying products from far away. And then those two themes meet in a very interesting way in creating infrastructure for things like communication, large-scale city infrastructure. Instead of those being billion-dollar investments to fund and then amortize, the technology that makes it easier to te create technology makes it easier to extend the infrastructure of cities in these smart ways. Getting there increasingly is limited not by the technology, but by things like standards and by accounting for life cycle costs. And so that's where we ended with some of the policy implications.